chest x-ray with very good inspiratory offered by the patient almost instantly you notice there's a difference in densities over right and left upper zones the right upper zone is well irrigated with vascular markings clearly visible versus on left there's a diffuse density in left upper zone is this consolidation there's no air bronchogram in this area and deceptively both lungs seem to have equal volume but trust me this is not true aortic knuckle is not clearly visible although there is uh, an air density around it but it is not as clearly visible as it is on a normal PA view the right uh, uh, sorry left hilum is slightly raised remember the highest point in left hilum is left pulmonary artery which is obviously not visible in this area on the right side the highest point in uh, right hilum is right main bronchus so this is right main bronchus this is left main bronchus this is angle of carina here now what is this the lateral view often makes life easier so let's see the lateral view of this patient uh, lateral view is very diagnostic you see a sharp line here and this tissue here and there's a difference of densities here this tissue belongs to right lung this is aorta ascending aorta arch of aorta and descending aorta here now this is oblique fissure that belongs to left lung it should normally be somewhere here so this is a very typical picture of left upper lobe collapse left upper lobe collapses from back towards the anterior chest wall therefore loss of lung volume is often not visible on a PAV but this is uh, not uh, the case always sometimes you do see a loss of lung volume which obviously is not visible on PAV of this patient during the collapse of left upper lobe the pleura that is attached to anterior chest wall does not lose its position but the lung tissue the tissue of the uh, upper left upper lobe is collapsing it's shrinking in size so what it does it pulls the oblique fissure along with it so it the the upper lobe is losing its volume it's shrinking and it has pulled the oblique fissure anteriorly uh, now this is ascending aorta which is anterior arch of aorta and sort of this portion of aorta is visible here now because left upper lobe has uh, lost uh, its volume and air the density is very much similar to the density of the aortic knuckle here and that's why it's, uh, it is not as clearly visible as it should be uh, although there is an air density here around it the crescent air density which has got a name uh, and it's German name we don't want to go too much uh, uh, into the details of the name it would be difficult for you to remember now uh, other than that right cross preventing angle left cross preventing angles are clear there is no sign of pleural effusion it means uh, right cardiodiaphragmatic angle and left cardiodiaphragmatic angle both are clear the lung tissue behind the heart is visible the, it's known as retrocardic area uh, the transverse diameter of heart 
is less than the hemidiaphragm. There is no cardiomegaly and lower lobe vessels are larger than the upper lobe vessels. So no sign of cardiac failure and trachea is shifted towards the left hand side. Uh, it can happen because of the collapsed lobe. In this area just above the carinal bifurcation the trachea is always pushed towards the right hand side. This is always normal because aorta passes over this area and pushes the trachea towards the right hand side. I would also like to show you a picture of CT scan. Axial CT scan slice. So this is uh, the this is left main bronchus, right main bronchus just after the bifurcation and this bronchial branch was supposed to supply air to the left upper lobe and as you can see there is no supply from this point onwards so this is airless collapsed lung tissue main pulmonary artery and ascending aorta descending aorta here okay so these uh, wonderful pictures have been copied from www.wikiradiography.com it's a fantastic website and I would like to thank uh, the gentleman who has uploaded these uh, wonderful images do visit this website it is very informative uh, thank you very much